This month marks a year since the publication of a study that took a detailed and critical look at Japan's nuclear industry. The Kurokawa report has harsh words for politicians, regulators, and managers of Tokyo Electric Power Company, and it laid out several recommendations. But one year on, some of the people that penned it are questioning whether anything has changed. The Diet appointed a panel of independent experts to investigate the nuclear meltdowns at Fukushima Daiichi. It was an unprecedented measure in the aftermath of an industrial accident. The panel spent a total of 900 hours questioning more than 1,100 witnesses, ranging from the prime minister and senior TEPCO officials to the workers who dealt with the crisis. They discovered that some senior TEPCO officials knew before the accident that a large tsunami could have a severe impact on the plant. The report concluded the accident was a man-made disaster. It said TEPCO officials had missed several opportunities of averting a crisis because they put the utility's business interests ahead of safety. The report also revealed what it called a regulatory capture, in which regulators were in effect complying with the expectations of the power industry. Among its conclusions, the panel recommended creating a permanent parliamentary committee to oversee the nuclear industry. It also stressed that the investigation was far from over and that it should be continued. One year later, nothing has been done on either proposal. Some people regret Japan's failure to take into account the conclusions of the Kurokawa report, and they've started a project to put its recommendations to better use. NHK World's Yoichiro Tataiwa reports. <laughs> When I read the report, I felt strongly that it's trying to teach young people and build a new future for Japan. I learned from the report that the government regulators were in fact regulated by the operators, so it was natural that they couldn't prevent the accident. Satoshi Shibashi is the driving force behind the project. He was a member of the DAI panel and he thinks their message has failed to find an audience. Since our report is funded by taxpayers, I think we should share the content and the message of the report with as many people as possible. I hope we can generate more discussion on what lessons to draw from the Fukushima accident. Ishibashi has enlisted some university students to help turn the Kurokawa report into a video. This is the video we are producing. He says they're using simple words and animation to make the topic engaging and easy to understand. Translators are working on an English version of the video to carry the message beyond Japan's borders. Kiyoshi Kurokawa, who served as the chair of the Dai panel, has high hopes for the project. He really making a commitment to young people to engage into this process and because that youth carries the future of Japan and the world. Ishibashi says an honest, level-headed discussion of the nuclear issue is essential, though it won't be easy. We have to look at the issue realistically, rather than just taking a stance for or against nuclear power. We should form ideas based on the realities and generate a discussion, exchange views with each other. Ishibashi's meetings usually draw around 30 participants from all kinds of backgrounds. 
It's not just about helping people to understand the issue. It's also to get us to think about the things ahead. There's no quick fix for the problems associated with nuclear power and radiation. It's something we'll have to continue thinking about. Two and a half years after the accident, and one year after the Krokow report came out, TEPCO is still launching from crisis to crisis, and the future of the nuclear industry remains a big question mark. Ishibashi says the Japanese public needs to generate a discussion now more than ever.